I made a joke on Twitter saying that I think this industry is going to come full circle back to CoffeeScript one day. And someone linked me this project called Civit, uh, which basically looks like type uh, CoffeeScript that compiles down to TypeScript. It has like a less syntax to write the same code in uh, TypeScript. And I want to kind of play around this live um, and see if I can get this running locally on my VS Code. But one thing I found interesting is if you scroll through here, it is sponsored by Builder.io, which is actually the same company who sponsors Quick.js, which is another framework that's like kind of blowing up. I've always liked CoffeeScript. I love that you can write a lot less code and achieve the same stuff. When you start writing TypeScript or JavaScript, there's just so much extra syntax that you have to write just to achieve like the same thing. And I kind of miss CoffeeScript. It went away because like it got beat out by ES6. But I wish I can kind of go back to CoffeeScript at some point. So I might actually try this out right now and let's just see if this is something that would be interesting to you. So let's go to get started. It looks like you can run it by using something like this. Um, and I did install a Civit extension, but I guess it failed to work. So that's not good. All right, uh, let's see if it's working. So let's just start with like declaring some variables. I think there's a special way you can declare variables. Like I could say age and then I could declare a constant like this and I could say like 20. And I believe if I were to try to like reassign this to something else, since this is actually just using like TypeScript under the hood, this thing fails because it can't reassign a constant, right? Now I think I can also scope this to like a number. I can say like change this to hello and I believe it should fail. Well, obviously it's going to fail because it's a constant, but if I change it to a let by using the dot, Right, I still get that TypeScript IntelliSense, but this is a lot less code. Now you might look at this and be like, this is really weird. Uh, like, why would you do this? So it might take some getting used to, but let's see if we can kind of like, um, but let's see if we can actually like run this. So I'm going to console log, and I believe I can just put age. And I'm getting some issues. So let's see, cannot find name console. I need to change your target library. So I think I probably need to set up some TypeScript here. Um, so if I add a tsconfig file, let's just copy this. And I will say tsconfig.json that in. Let's see if we get any type of uh, elisons. Well, I don't know why this thing's still, still complaining. Again, this is the first time I'm actually playing around with this, doing it live. So let's just try running this thing. Can I do like um, mpx civit? What was the command I had to use? I think it was this. And I can give it the file. So let's say test and see what happens. And it should just print out the age. There we go. So a little bit different, like the, the way you call functions, you don't have to add parentheses, you actually just pass the arguments here. So if I had another one like name, which is a string equals to Cody, and then I just go ahead and put a comma here and put name, I believe this is how you can pass parameters to your function calls like this. It's pretty interesting. Let's just look at some if statements here. So I say if age, um, let's see how they do equality, because sometimes you know, they do, they got rid of the triple equals and some, I think CoffeeScript got rid of the triple equals. Let's see if they do equality here. If this, yeah, so I could probably just say if age is equal to 20 and then I could say console log hello and then else I could say console log goodbye. Go ahead and run that, see what happens. It prints out hello. So again, you can do if statements. You don't have to have curly braces here. Um, I do believe all these things have implicit returns. So if I were to actually return like um, the string here, hello and goodbye, and I say message is equal to this, and then console log the message, I believe this thing should print out hello for message. So let's try running this and get rid of some of that. Yeah, so basically the if statement is going to have a, an implicit return here based on the last statement of your, your branch, and that's going to be put into this constant, and then I log this constant out. Um, let's see if we can look at loops real quick and see how, how hard it would be like to do a math function. Okay, so if we make something, we can just map over it, and, and we can actually pick, looks like you can pick stuff like this, which is pretty cool. Um, so let's just say we had a list of people, and that's going to be an array. So how do you do arrays in this language? Let's make sure we know how to do that. Probably this. I don't think the array syntax changes any. So let's just go ahead and say like, let's say age is 20, name is Bob. And we'll do this again a couple times. So I don't know if this is right. Let's just go ahead and print this out. I'm going to print out people. 
go ahead and run this and let's see if it prints out. So again, it prints out the arrays correctly. Now, the only issue with this language is you got to make sure that your indentation's right. Cause I think if you start like screwing up the indentation, um, it might not do what you want. Like if I do that and I think that these objects are the same, but if I put this on a new line, yeah, this should work fine. So again, like I was trying to play around with map. How do you do a map in this civet language? Well, I can say console log people dot map, and then I can say dot name. And I should use the ampersand, not the money sign. So ampersand here. Now this is going to print out Bob, Sally, and John. So if you view, you know, JavaScript, like what is the way to pick out the name from all of these things? Well, you'd have to say people dot map. And then you have to pass it a like person. And then I have to say person dot name. Or I could say people dot map. And then I can destruct name and then return name. All right, so this is just a nice syntactic sugar to like do that for us. And this is something that we do all the time. Like you have to loop through an array and you have to just get things that are like equal to that. So I think this is actually pretty cool. Is there a filter? Do they have a way to like quickly do filters? I mean, there might be a way to just filter by age of like 20 here. Let's just go here. I'm gonna say, give me all the people whose age is greater than or equal to 15. Let's see what this prints out. Yeah, this works exactly fine too, because this is going to take every single entry in this array, it's going to filter out and only give me the ones that are greater than or equal to 15. And again, like this is TypeScript safe. So if I were to change this to something like dumb, like a string, I actually get that type safety saying that like I cannot do greater than or equal to from number to string. So let's play around with functions a little bit. Let's say we have a function that needs to actually filter the stuff out. So I'm going to say, give me a function called, um, filter people and this is going to be equal to a function which takes in people i'll say persons um and then what this thing needs to do is i need to return i'll say persons filter like that and i do believe this thing needs to be like scoped as like a i'll just say object array let me make a type up here i don't know if you could do types here i'll say type person a person and that's going to have an age of number and then I will have a name of string so I don't know if there is a I don't know if there's a way to do types let's see types yeah so you don't need the curly braces I can just do an equals um, and I think that's it type point is equal to this okay which compiles down to that. So I think if I were to change this to T person, and I filter that and I want to call this function and pass it people and run this, this should all work and it should take this function. It's going to call this function. It's going to pass it this argument, which is the array of people. And then it's going to take that and loop through all the people and filter them and return the results here. So I think if you're not used to like CoffeeScript, I used to use CoffeeScript a long time ago. If you're not used to the syntax of CoffeeScript, this is very confusing. And you might be like, oh, why do I have to do all this stuff? It's weird. I miss my curly braces. But the more you use JavaScript, in my opinion, TypeScript, like there's just so much extra curly braces and characters. And that's one reason I really like Python is that the indentation base is like kind of nice. You know, like you, you, there's less stuff that your eyes have to worry about jumping around and uh, getting confused on, um, which I really like. So this is pretty cool. I actually may start looking more into this. I'm kind of glad I made that Twitter joke because someone exposed me to this, which is a nice way to do uh, coding. And one thing I also see is that they have like a way to do JSX with a, a, a more minimal approach like this, where you can basically do your classes like this. Um, I think this makes it indentation based as well. So that's kind of all I want to share with you all. I just want to play around with this little CoffeeScript-like language, which I might actually start playing around with this more. I kind of like the syntax. It makes stuff easier to read. There's another thing that I remember using or learning about called Scrimba. I think it's called Scrimba.js or something. Um, Why well, know Scrimba is the online lear learning? I think it's called Imba. Is it Imba.js? Yeah, here it is. This was another thing that I came across at one point where they also try to take an approach of like less code so write less code to achieve the same thing um where they do indentation based stuff they got rid of the curly braces and i don't know if they just wrote their own like javascript transpiler under the hood um 
but I don't know if they have support for TypeScript here. I'm sure that I'm, I'm guessing they do, but they might not. It says they support TypeScript, so maybe that's fine. Yeah, so it's kind of like they did their own little coffee script, although you separate objects and arrays with, with this hyphen, which is kind of different from coffee script from what I understand. They use different words like def. I don't know if this one uses, let's go to cheat sheet and say like functions. Yeah, they just name it functions still. But yeah, I guess if you're interested, go check out this uh, programming language. I think it's pretty interesting. Um, definitely a way to write less code, less verbose code that achieves the same thing if you're kind of big in the coffee script or was at some time. Also, Imba is also another potential way to do the same thing. I'm not sure. I haven't really used it too much. But I know the people who made the Scrimba online learn learning platform use this type of thing, which I guess has made them more productive. Anyway, that's all I got for you. If you want to uh, join my Discord to talk to me directly or just find a place to ask questions for other developers, feel free to click the link. It should be in the description of the video. And by the way, I do plan to make a full SaaS course soon and publish that. So, so if that's something that you're interested in, be sure to uh, subscribe to my newsletter. And when I have that course ready, I will publish a link and you all can just go check it out. Anyway, have a good day and ha happy coding.